right, geometry peeps. Welcome to the new week. Uh, last lesson we had wrapped up our unit. And you know what that means. It's time to take a test. So let me tell you how this works. Today, this lesson is a review that will look an awful lot like the test. We're going to do problems very, very similar to what's on the test. These aren't the test problems, but they if you can do these, they certainly uh, resemble the test problems enough that you should be able to do the test problem. So uh, you can do this review. And if you need to do the review again, uh, it's not going to let you change your answer, but you can watch it again because that's just how this, this website works. But I want you to have a chance to go through this with me and understand and know what we're going to be uh, learning and have you a chance to participate in that. So may not be as short as some of them. Hopefully I'm not real long in this video, but there's not going to be another assignment. The review is the assignment today. So you don't have other work to do past this. So that's the positive side. Uh, the test will be next class and it will be on formative. It will be open for 48 hours. Uh, that's it. And then it will close. You don't get to go back and redo that like the assignments right now. If you messed up on any of those, you can go back and redo those. Those are those are allowing you to go back and redo those assignments. If you're going back and doing older assignments, send me an email or something so I know to go back and check for your grade because I, I don't go back and check all those every day. Uh, there's a lot of them by now. So uh, if, you've, if you've improved your score on that, let me know so I can go back and make sure and get it in the grade book. Once you'd have credit for what you know, if you know more now than you did when you tried it, let's let's get that let's get that going. So today we're going to go through this review together, uh, problem by problem. And if you don't understand it, back it up, look at it again. If you still don't understand it, I'm online, and Mrs. Smith's online. We're both online every weekday. Uh, if you're not on looking at the same time that our office hour is posted, shoot an email. I check my email throughout the day uh, during weekdays, uh, not so much in the weekend, but on the weekdays. And I will set up a time. I'll get to, I'll hop online with you and just say, hey, what are you, what are you having trouble with? Hey, let's look at it. And we'll, we'll, we'll put some problems out and go through it. So uh, I've done that with several students. It really seems to help. Uh, and we can we can do it. So with that, with no further ado, just an appropriate amount of ado today. We will get started on this. All right, so line M is represented by this equation. Y plus 2 equals 3 halves X plus 4. Select all equations that represent lines perpendicular, and I put this in red and underlined it here for our review, because that's the important word sometimes we miss, perpendicular to line M. Also, all. Remember, anytime you see all on a test, any kind of test, ACT, you can almost count on the fact there's going to be more than one. So I still see people selecting one answer when it says select all. So that means look for more than one answer. All right, we want all the equations perpendicular to line M. Let's start looking at this first one. Uh, let me pull it in a little closer, make sure we can see it clearly, which, which means I need to refocus now. I'm putting a big shadow on it, but I think we can survive with that. All right, here is our original equation, and it is in point-slope form, not the usual slope-intercept that you're used to seeing. And we're supposed to select all the ones that are perpendicular. Is this line perpendicular to the original line? Mm, how do we know? The only thing that we need to know for perpendicular, because it doesn't tell us any point it has to go through, the only thing that matters is the slope. And here is the slope. So the slope is 3 halves. Anything that has a slope of 3 halves is going to be parallel to that because that's the same slope. A perpendicular slope, remember, is the opposite reciprocal. Reciprocal means we're going to turn it upside down. Opposite means this is a positive slope, so ours is a negative slope. So this one is not a perpendicular line to the original line M. All right. So knowing that is this perpendicular to our original line. Let me go, maybe show that there. Is this perpendicular? Negative two-thirds is the slope. That's what we're looking for. How about this one? Hope you weren't fooled. There's no negative. It is two-thirds, but that's a positive two-thirds. 
How about y equals 3 halves x plus 4? That is parallel. Parallel. That's not going to be a perpendicular line. Same slope. How about this one? Negative 4 sixths. So a little out of focus here. I'm sure you can see that. Negative 4 six. y plus 1 equals negative 4 six x plus 5. Is that perpendicular? Yes, it is. Negative 4, 6 can be simplified. You can divide 2, divided by 2 over 2. That's the same thing as 2 thirds. So that is a negative 2 thirds slope. That is also perpendicular. How about this last one? y plus 1 equals 3 halves x plus 5. No, 3 halves was their original slope. So for these problems right here, uh, there were two correct answers, and it is B and E. Okay, so when you're checking for perpendicular, if there's not a certain point it has to go through, so just say perpendicular or parallel, you don't have to compare slopes. That's all you have to compare. So identify the slope, and then identify what slope you're looking for. So that shouldn't be too bad. It's a good start for the test on something that we should be able to just jump right into. All right, uh, we're done with, oh, I was going to show you the, uh, this will be the very first uh, of the test, will be this uh, reference chart. All right, have this reference chart, it just basically goes over the basics of the things that we've studied. Here's the equation of a circle, which shows the center HK, so it has X minus H, Y minus K, you know, squared equals R squared, radius R. So hk with a radius of r. That is the equation of a circle. Uh, here's the point slope form that we were just using on the last problem. That point slope form y minus k equals m x minus h where hk is the point and m is the slope. So uh, there's that. And then definitions of parallel and perpendicular which if we forget those because we're taking a test and we go oh I don't remember what perpendicular is. Lines are perpendicular if and only if. I like that if and only if their slopes are opposite reciprocals. So parallel, if and only if they have equal slopes. So this will be at the beginning of your test. So you'll be able to scroll up and, and see that uh, as you take the test, if you need to refer to that. There's also an uh, online calculator. If you don't have a good calculator to use and you need a calculator, uh, desmos.com slash scientific will pull up a calculator on the screen that will make it easy for you to do some calculations if you get anything that needs that. So, all right, we're going to look at this image of a circle. This image shows a circle, the center of 4-1, uh, which I should have had that point on there. There's 4-1, all right. 4-1 and a radius of 5 units. Okay, so we can see it goes 5 in every direction. Here's the equation. I gave us the equation for the circle because it's very useful for what it's asking us to do. Select all points. Oh, again. There's that word that makes us think there's probably more than one um, that lie on the circle. So, oh, didn't get the parentheses. All right, so 8, 4. How do we know if 8, 4? Well, I can kind of eyeball it there, Chuck. I can, uh, I can just pull it right up there and go, yeah, yeah, I think that's right there. I can see it. It's right there on that spot right there. No, we don't do it that way. This is, this is algebra. We are, we are mathematicians, and mathematicians use this equation. We take this 8, which is the x. This is an x, y. And we say, well, if it's x, then that's 8. 8 minus 4. What's 8 minus 4? That's 4. What's 4 squared? Well, that would be 16. Plus, that's that plus right there. y minus 1. What's the y? The y is 4. What's 4 minus 1? 3. 3 squared. What's 3 squared? It's 9. Does that equal 25? 16 plus 9? It does equal 25. That must be on the circle. That's how we do that. Substitute these points in to that equation and see if it works. Let's try this next one. Uh, 5. So we would say 5 minus 4 squared for the x, right? That's the x. 5 minus 4 squared is 1. Plus 6 minus 1 squared equals 25. 6 minus 1 is 5. What's 5 squared? 25. So 1 plus 25 equals 25. Oh, that don't work, does it? Because that would be 26. So point B is not on the circle. That's not one we would select. And we look at it, it looks like it might be. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell exactly. 
but that is not. That's just outside of our circle. Uh, one, one minus four is negative three. Negative three times negative three is nine. So that would be nine plus the y, negative three minus one. Negative three minus one more, negative four. Uh, negative four times negative four when we square it. 16, nine plus 16. Oh, that's kind of like that one up there. Nine plus 16 is 25. Four and one. Four minus four is zero. So zero squared plus one minus one is zero. Well, that's zero. Well, that's the center of our circle. Look at there. That's that point right there. Of course, that's not on the circle. It's not on the circle. It's the center of the circle. Wasn't paying attention. Could have got that. One. How about this? One minus four. That's negative three. Negative three squared is nine. Plus five minus one. Five minus one is four. Four times four is 16. Oh, that one also equals 25. So it turns out three of our points were on the circle with two of them one being the center, one being just outside the circle because it equaled 26. So what this is, is uh, just algebraically solving the problem. Uh, we've had that before. We said, how do you algebraically do this? You say, well, I'll put it in a graph. No, that's graphically solving. We're talking about algebra. Algebra, using the equation, substituting numbers in. And this works uh, for all kinds of problems. Take a x, y, substitute in, see if it's true, and they'll tell you a lot. So... All right, that is a lot like, like the second problem. Find the center and radius of the circle given by this equation. Okay, let me see. Let me get my reference page out. I'm scrolling back up, and I'm looking to see center and radius. Okay, it's going to look like x minus h squared and y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Yeah, mine don't look like that. Oh, that means i got to do some work. I need it to be x minus h squared. I need it to be a perfect trinomial, perfect squared trinomial. This is a binomial, so I need it, and I got to get it. Okay, well, we can do this. Completing the square. So we want to group the x's together. Oh, good, they're already grouped, so let's just re rewrite them over here. x squared minus 8x, and then it's going to be plus something. We've got to figure that out. And then we've got the y squared plus y squared uh, plus 10y plus something. we got to figure that out. It's going to equal, because we're going to take this and we're going to add 8 to both sides, because we need a radius, right? The radius is 0. We don't have a circle. We have a point. So it's going to equal 8. So I move that to the other side, and these I've kept the same. I just gave us a little space to work. All right, for that to be x minus or plus something squared and y let's see that's an x should be x minus something y minus something or it could be a plus if it's the center is a negative um x y oh wow that's a big minus squared at this point equals eight but What's that going to be? Not too hard. Remember from algebra, completing the square. If you're confused then, maybe it'll be simpler now. You've grown another year in math. To find out what this number is over here, we took this negative 8x and we cut it in half. So now it's only a negative 4x. And we're going to drop the x because we're just trying to get what the constant is. So negative 8 becomes negative 4. And then, to find out what that number we're adding is, we're going to take negative 4 and square it. Negative 4 times negative 4. So we're adding 16, because that's what negative 4 times itself would be. That means down here, we want this to be negative 4. x minus 4. Negative 4 twice would be negative 8. Negative 4 multiplied by itself would be 16. That's a perfect squared trinomial. Perfect. We got it. How about this one? 10y. That's not a negative. That's a positive. So uh, it would be 5 on behalf of it. 5 would be down here, but it, it's got to be a positive, right? So if the only way that could be a positive is if we were subtract. Well, let me do it this way. That's the same thing as y minus negative 5, right? 
Same thing as y minus negative 5. y plus 5 is what our circle equation would look like. Because 5 will tell us that number that's half of the middle one. But what we're adding on is 5 times 5. Now, we've made a mistake because we've changed the equation. we got to fix that. How have we changed the equation? Well, we've added 16 and 25 to one side of the equation, but we haven't done it to the other side. So that means we also have to add 16 and 25 over here, or else we've changed. It's not the same circle. It's something totally different. So doing that, now we've got x minus 4 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals equals what? 8 plus 16 is 24. 24 plus 25 is 49. All right, this is the equation of a circle now. This one looks just like our reference sheet when we looked at equation of a circle. All right, x minus h plus y minus k. Now ours is a positive. That'll, that'll tell us something. Equals r squared. All right, so the center is hk. Whatever x is subtracting is the h coordinate of the center. So in our case, it's subtracting 4. So that is the x of our center. y minus k. y minus, what is that number? y minus negative 5. All right, it has to be a negative 5 because that's the only way that would end up as a positive is if we were subtracting a negative because we are subtracting the y coordinate of the point to be that uh, equation there. So y minus negative 5. So that has to be the center for negative 5. What's the radius? Well, our equation said it equals r squared. So r squared is 49. So what's r if r squared is 49? Well, that means r is 7 or negative 7, right? could be the one that would be squared to equal 49. And since we're talking about distance, radius is how long is it? We know the radius is a positive 7. can't be a negative 7. Draw me a circle with a radius of negative 7. Email it to me. I'd love to see that. Uh, but that's how we did that. Oh, I ended up writing on my reference sheet. I went right off the page. That's okay. So that is the center and radius. That one probably requires more work than most of the rest of the test. Maybe. But if you need to go back and watch this section again, go right ahead and do that. Find the point that partition segment AB in a 2 to 1 ratio. 2 to 1 ratio. So that means we have to cut it in how many pieces? 3, because A is first, it's 2. A gets 2 of those pieces, and B just gets 1. So we got two pieces for A for every one piece that B gets. Two to one. Kind of like when I'm dishing out the M&Ms to my family. You know, I get two, you get one. Um, find the point of partition. So here is our segment from A to B. And we're going to cut it into three equal pieces and give A two of them. So we've got to find that point that would do that. So we need to know how long that is. Because if it's a length of six, we know we just have two and two and two. A gets four and B gets two, so that's how it would work. So how long is this segment? Can we figure that out? A ruler is not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it with a ruler. We're not looking for that. We're looking for, uh, because it might be on your screen different than it is on my screen too, so that wouldn't even work. Um, we're gonna use our good old friend, that Greek mathematician. We're gonna pull out that theorem that he developed so long ago that we use for right triangles, the Pythagorean theorem. So this side is three tall, one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight blocks there, three by eight. So how long is that line? Hmm. We'll see if it's something nice. Uh, three squared is nine, eight squared is 64, so that is 73. 73 is not a nice square root. So this is going to be a length that's like eight point something long. That's not going to help us. So what's another method we can use? Oh, let's just find how far it goes left to right and give two thirds of that length to the A. 
and then find how far it goes up and down and make sure A has two thirds of that length. That's really the strategy we need. So let's look at uh, up and down looks easy. It's three tall. So if we divide it into three pieces, where's the up and down point of this dividing point? Well, A is gonna get two of those three. So it's gonna be somewhere along there, right? It's gonna be right on that point. A gets two of them, B gets one of them. So that point is gonna be somewhere along that line. How about right here? And we could easily say, okay, well, it's that point right there, but I need to know what that point is because that is the point up and down it is, but I, I have to know the coordinates. So we're gonna have to come up with the coordinates because it says find the point. The point means what is the X, Y? And that is not on a point, so we're gonna have to calculate this. So if we divided this distance, this eight up, all right, and we had this eight, that's eight long, and we say we're gonna cut it here and here, and we're gonna have three equal pieces, and A gets two of them, so we wanna know how far is this. If this whole thing is eight, all right, if we divide it by three, that means this one is eight thirds, this one is eight thirds, this one's eight thirds. That's how long each of those would be, because if we add those together, we'd have 24 thirds, which is eight. So each of those are eight thirds. We just take eight and divide it by three. And A gets two of those. So A gets 16 thirds. Say, well, is that our, is that our X? Is that where we're it would be our X, except for we didn't start at zero. We started at one. So we need to add one more three thirds. That's one, right? We're adding one because we started, the A is at one. It's not at zero. If it was on the Y axis at the beginning, that would be our coordinate. It would be at 16 thirds. But we're going to add one more. So that's going to be at 19 thirds. 19 thirds, if you want to look up the decimal and put that in your calculator, 19 divided by 3 is 6.3333333. Uh, this is 6, and that is uh, about 0.333. That's one third of the way where that crosses over. So our coordinates are 19 thirds. And yes, it's 19 thirds. It's not 6.333. You're really close with that, but you cut off some threes uh, basically from there to infinity. So... Uh, you're off just a little bit with rounding. And the Y coordinate is right there, right there. But that, it's one, but it didn't start at zero either. So this is the line that's two. So that is the point that we were looking for. We didn't need to know how long that was. We can calculate that if we want to know. And we, we know how long that A has and how much B has. But it's a square root of 73 situation, right? Divide it by three and give two of them to the A. That's, that's not a nice number. Since it didn't turn out a nice number that we can just divide and do that, this is the best way to do it. And it really works the best way anyway. Find the distance, left to right, take two thirds of it, up and down, take two thirds. Make sure A gets the two thirds part and B gets the one third part. There's your point. All right, last page. Last page, this is what the test will be like. I have a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D. All right, uh, A, B, C, D. Uh, prove that this is a square, and you must show work to receive full credit. If you just say it's a square, that's not hardly worth anything, because I told you it was a square. So how do you prove something's a square? Well, you need to prove that uh, two things, right? First, all the side lengths should be the same, because a square has the same length on every side. What's the other thing we would need to prove to show that it's a square other than all the sides are the same length. The angles have to be 90 degrees. Otherwise, it could be a rhombus, right? It could be a rhombus. But square has to be 90 degree angles. So we need to prove that these are the same length and they're 90 degree angles. How do we prove it's 90 degree angles? Uh, remember that perpendicular thing? Perpendicular lines meet at 90 degree angles. So if they have opposite reciprocal slopes, That'll tell us that those are 90 degree angles. And we don't have to check all of them. If we check two together, if these are 90 degrees, those have to be 90 degrees if all the sides are the same length. There's no, there's no option there. So let's check the side lengths first. We need to know that. So to do that, we're going to do that Pythagorean theorem. So we would say it goes over there and it goes down there. And that's a 90 degree angle. So we can find out how long this hypotenuse is. 
This is one, two, three, four, five. So that would be five squared plus, so that's a squared plus b squared. b is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. Okay, twelve squared. And what's it going to be? That's going to be c squared, whatever the length of the side is over here is. So five squared is 25. What is 12 times 12? It's a gross. It's a gross number. Gross. What is 12 times 12? It's 144. And that's c squared. 25 plus 144 is 169. So 169, what number times itself equals 169? Need to memorize that. Be good to get at least through 12, 13, 14, 15 would be awesome. If you knew all the way to 15, if you get to do 12s, it'll get you through life wonderfully. Um, this is 13 times 13. So C is 13 or negative 13, but we're talking about lengths here. 13 is the length of the side. Okay, so we know that side's 13. Let's check another side. Okay, this has a height of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hey, this was, this was 12 and this was 5. This is the exact same triangle. It has to be the same length. How about this one? Let's check this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, that's where that one lines up right there. 5. So this is 5. And this is starting at the 0 and going up to the 12. So this is 12. All of those are the same length, 13. And this one goes from 0 to 5 and 0 to 12. So this is the same. So they are all 13 long. That's good. That, that's half of what we need to prove, right? So uh, 90 degree angle. So let's look at some slopes. From point A to point D, let's go up. What is the slope of that line right there? The rise over the run. Remember, slope is rise over run. On a graph, on a graph, it's rise over run because we can just count them. This goes up 12, which we already counted over here. It goes up 12 and over 5. So the slope is 12 fifths for A to D. So let's check A to B. What is the slope for A to B? Well, the rise is negative 5. It went down 5. So the rise is negative 5. And how far did it run? 12. 12 fifths, negative 5 twelfths. Opposite reciprocals. Opposite reciprocals means perpendicular, 90 degree angles. This is a 90 degree angle. How about this up here? From D to C. What's the slope from D to C? The rise is negative 5 again. It went down. And it went 12, also negative 5 twelfths. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is also 90 degrees. All right, so if that's 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees, and these are the same length, uh, those by default are 90 degrees. So that's enough to prove that's a square. Showing that we had the sides all the same length and we checked some slopes, they're offset reciprocals. Now find the perimeter of A, B, C, D. Ooh, perimeter. Okay. <coughs> perimeter is the distance around. Like if you wanted to walk around the perimeter of the building, you would walk around the building, right? You wouldn't go through, you're not everywhere. So what is the perimeter? Well, if we start here and walk around the square, we're going to go 13. We're going to go another 13. We're going to go another 13. And we're going to go another 13. So we've gone 13 four times, which means we have traveled a total of 52 units. 52. Um, I'm just going to say units because we don't have inches, centimeters, squares, meters, nothing. 52 units. How about the area? How do you find area of a square? Length times width. So what is the area of ABCD? Well, that would be length times width, which is the same thing for a square. 13 by 13. We found this right here by going the other direction. 13 times 13 was 169, so it told us it was 13. 
So we can say 169 units squared is our area. All right, you have had a preview of the test in a lot of ways, very similar problems. So making it through this should help you a lot on the test. Uh, if any of this is confusing, please come see Mrs. Smith or myself. Again, we're online every weekday. We want to talk to you guys. I've enjoyed visiting with those of you who came online. It's nice to hear your voice again. It has been a while now for a lot of you. And uh, we want to be able to help you with that. So let's, uh, let's finish strong with this unit and move on to the next one. And that way we can finish the year on a high note and ready to jump into uh, next year, right? Which is uh, still, who knows what's going to go on then. But anyway, uh, ready, test next class. So if you don't understand any of this, you can watch it again. Come see us. We want you to do well. Do work you can be proud of. Have a great day.